There is a sermonette. There are a series of yoga videos that I, I watch from time to time. And one of the videos is a, a three minute breathing exercise. In a, a silky, soothing voice, the instructor informs me that this particular breathing technique that consists of taking a number of deep breaths from the abdomen and exhaling slowly is in fact used by the Navy SEALs to help them to calm down and to cope with the stress that they experience before major operations. And I must tell you, this is a an, an very amazingly useful piece of information. It feels really good to know that when I cope with stress before giving a sermon, I'm almost as brave as a Navy SEAL. Would you believe it? <laughs> and in a different context, a couple of years ago, discussing with the doctor symptoms of anxiety I was feeling at that time, he informed me that I was hyperventilating. What do you mean, I said? I'm breathing perfectly normally. Oh, no, you're not, he said. Your breath is shallow and coming from your chest. The proper way to breathe is from your abdomen. Well, I'm reminded of these two stories because of a line in the parasha this week. Moses comes to the Israelite nation. At this stage, they are suffering enormously from the burdens of enslavement. And in the name of God, he makes them, as it says in the movies, an offer they can't refuse. I will take you out from under the burdens of Egypt. I will take you to me as a people and I'll be a God for you. I'll bring you to the land that I promised to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. But the Israelites don't hear it because quoting the Torah, and this is translated by the way in the various editions of the Chumash in different ways, but the Steinzel's Chumash translates this as they didn't hear him because of a lack of patience and because of hard work. Well, mekotze ruach, the phrase mekotze ruach literally translates as shortness of breath. As Rashi puts it, whoever's troubled, their breath is short or shallow, what my doctor described as hyperventilating. But idiomatically, the expression shortness of breath means bated breath or impatience or anxious. So in this phrase, Rabbi Adin Steinzel's comments as follows. The redemption envisioned by Moses appeared just too distant from their current reality. The burden of the enslavement weighed so heavily on their spirit that they lacked the strength to attend to these seemingly fantastical images of their future national destiny. Rabbi, Rabbi Shimshon Raphael Hirsch suggests that they were so burdened by their work that they didn't even have the patience to listen. In a similar vein, Rabbi Avadya Svarna says it did not appear believable to their present state of mind. Their heart couldn't assimilate such a promise. Nachmanides, since we're doing a trot through some of the famous commentators, takes a different tack entirely. He says, it's not that the Israelites didn't believe in God, but they were scared out of their minds, scared that something would go wrong with the whole plan for freedom. The idea of trying just seemed too much trouble, more trouble than it was worth. So it wasn't the situation that limited them. They limited themselves. They, their shortened spirits made their, their whole world shrink. I have just one more commentator for you. And this one is the, for me, the profoundest. It comes from Rabbi Kalonimus Kalman Shapira, the Hasidic Rebbe who survived the Warsaw Ghetto and a number of the camps. And he knew firsthand about the Voda Kasha, Kasha, about hard labor. In a little notebook that miraculously survived those fateful years, he notes, that the effects of avodah kasha, relentlessly difficult toil, is that one loses the spirit of life, the very will to live. And in that context, it follows that promises about the future just mean nothing at all. The root for kotzer therefore suggests powerlessness, decline, 
distress, anxiety of spirit, hopelessness. Combine kotzer with the Hebrew word ruach, and you might land up with the expression, a depression of the soul. Well, it's really fascinating to note that the defining physical symptom of COVID-19 has been shortness of breath. Difficulty with breathing that in the worst case has required hospitalization and artificial respiratory assistance. The worst non-physical symptoms of extended lockdowns has been anxiety, mental stress and fear, depression of the soul. The combination of physical and mental symptoms of COVID amazingly incorporates all the interpretations of Kotzer Ruach that I've just outlined. Well, for anyone who may be suffering from a touch of Kotzer Ruach, here is an exercise suggested by Rabbi Naftali Schiff, an American therapist. The problem with Kotzer Ruach, shortness of breath, he says, Kotzer Ruach, depression of the spirit, is that it prevents a person from experiencing the Nachat Ruach that life has to offer. The antidote is to take four slow, deep breaths, imagining that you are breathing in Nachat Ruach with each breath and breathing out Kotzer Ruach with each breath. Go with the flow, with life, and don't fight against it. Even when plagues of COVID severity descend on the world, God doesn't want us to collapse into a state of Kotzer Ruach. Instead, he wants us to learn how to flow with the vitality and the energy that life has to offer. And you know, deeply inhaling and feeling the precious breath of life that God has placed, placed within us feels like a really good place to start. So take a couple of deep breaths now and let's move into the Shabbat zone. And I wish you Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>